Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cantrip Cast and episode three of Alteran Tales. Uh, yeah, sh getting weird. Uh, <laughs> everything got flipped and turned upside down, and uh, stuff is changing. If you watched last week's episode, you know exactly what I'm talking about. However, our three party members today don't know what happened because it's the same day of recording, and I don't want them to meta anything. So we're just going to throw them into the situation they were supposed to be in and see what happens. So, with that being said, let's get everything started. Our adventure starting today is taking place at Silver Beach uh, Outpost, which essentially is like a small little trade outpost on the southern shore of the Haxonian continent. And the three party members had taken a quest from the Codex of Quest Board to basically, uh, you know, be uh, with, uh, to, to work in assistance with a cargo run. There is an item being delivered from uh, Elvenglade that is going to be delivered to the, um, moon blue oh my god to the blue river college which is a mage college that is like on the opposite side of the realm but it takes time to get this you know uh, something like this here and it's trying to be done pretty quickly uh, and pretty efficiently because apparently it's some sort of like very expensive and very valuable package of sorts which the details of which were not really disclosed in the quest all you three would know is that it pays very well no questions asked just do it and you get a bunch of fucking gold in return you're currently sitting at uh, kind of like an outdoor outpost uh, by the docks uh, awaiting the ship to arrive that you were supposed to, uh, you know, pick up the order from. The order on the quest board that you picked up from the Codex of Quest simply said, await for the ship with the Red Raven sails, retrieve, retrieve the package, and head to Maltriff, which is a village to the north, to take an airship to the Blue River College. From there, you will uh, deliver the package and be paid. However, it has been about a day too late the ship has not arrived it is not there and that's pretty much what we're starting this week's episode <laughs> um so let's do a little bit of character introduction sitting at this kind of outpost by the shores by the docks waiting for the ship to arrive i imagine you guys have all kind of just like you know you came yesterday it didn't arrive and you're like whatever let's go to the tavern wait another night and come back you're back again today and it's not here uh, you've pretty much received, like, no further instruction. You got the quest. You were told to get the package and deliver it. You haven't really talked to anybody. You just know to deliver it. However, you know, sitting across this dock, kind of staring out into the ocean, waiting for the ship to arrive, we have uh, Techie. Go ahead and introduce your character. Hi, my name is Jeff. I am a fairy warlock. Um... <laughs> Okay, no, go. No, I had to make the joke. This is fine. No, this is fine. <laughs> but, um, Jeff has a little bit of a sore throat going on right now, so, you know, I've, but everything's good. No no fevers or anything, and uh, praise to Titania. The fairy warlock sits awaiting. Next to the fairy warlock, a tiefling. Bloody, please introduce your character. I am, I'm Ryan. I'm playing Amon, a tiefling paladin. He uh, Hexblade Paladin, to be specific. Uh, yeah, he's he's an you know, and he's an old salt. You know, he's an old soldier. He knows what's been going on. And he's kind of starting to get a little annoyed with the situation. Yeah, me too. Me too. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and next to Amon, a small Rentuki with a nice pristine turtle shell on his back stands, also awaiting. Uh, Jacob, please introduce your character if you could. Uh. My character's name is TP. They are a Rentuki monk, and they are very much dreading any sort of ship work because they have not had good experiences in the past with sh water and ships. I imagine that's probably why TP accepted the mission to go on an airship versus a, a water ship because that's the uh, what y'all were supposed to do was head north to Maltriff, which is just a small village uh, that is home to one of the, the airports here where there, there are airships at, and make your way to the Blue River College, which is up north on the opposite side of the, the continent in the area of Soul Grove. However, it has been about a day and a half. This should have been here about a day and a half ago. Uh, there is nothing. You have received no instruction. You have received nothing. You were just told to wait here for the ship. It'll be here. Grab the package, go to Maltriff, get on the same ship, uh, the same type of uh, airship that has the same, like, uh, sails that you would see. They describe that you would see sails that have, uh, like, a Red Raven on them, um, but you haven't seen it at all. You haven't spoken to anybody. Uh, Silver Beach is just a little outpost, so it's not a very, it's not even, like, a really a town or village. It's just where docks come in, like, people come into, like, you know, on ports and stuff to leave out into the city to go trade. With that being said, 
what would you guys like to do? You have your 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 deed, your quest, your contract that you've gotten to fulfill this mission. But no leads. I'm leaving it up to you guys. How would you like to go about this? What do you want to do? I don't care. Do whatever you want. Where was the ship supposed to be coming from? It was supposed to be coming from Norwood, which is on the western side of the, the realm next to or in the continent of Elvenglade. Um, it was only supposed to be about a day's travel, if that. Um, but it's been almost two days now. So do I see a dock master anywhere? Like the guy that's like, yeah, you, you know, definitely see a saying, dock master just kind of like directing ships and like tying docks off. Uh, you know, yeah, so uh, I want to walk up to him and be like, Hey, you know, is there any reason why a, a ship that should only have been here, should have been here yesterday, still isn't here now? You approach this dwarven man and goes, Oh, uh, not that I know. Uh, most ships that come into here usually come from Norwood or Eldershore and, Pretty smooth sailing, pretty easy, uh, pretty easy travel. Haven't been any kind of uh, problems in a while. Was there supposed to be a ship coming? Uh, let me check the itinerary here. Uh, one, two, three. Something um, about a ship with red raven yeah, sails. Yeah, you look at that. There, it was, there is a ship here that never was wasn't accounted for that ever arrived. That's not right. Hmm. And the weather's been good. No reason for yeah. that boat to be late. Weather been clear. No reason nothing be late. Yeah. Hmm. That's very All odd. Right. That's not... Yeah, I don't... Huh. Somebody fucked up. Somebody did indeed fuck up somewhere. Uh, I'm going to start looking into that because if a ship's missing, then that can mean one of multiple different things. I don't know. Uh, oceanic monsters, tidal waves, currents, uh, fucking pirates. We don't know. <sighs> All right, you look into it. If you find anything, let me know. Yeah, I'll definitely keep looking into it. I got a job to do today, but I'm going gonna, gonna to make some calls and, uh, you know, some... Uh, and send some messages around, see if anybody saw where this thing is going to, but, uh, yeah. Uh, while you're speaking to him, Amon, uh, I want everybody, if they could, to roll me a perception check. All right. Sixteen. Sixteen. Oh, perceptions. Nice. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. Robbed it. Uh, 11 11 okay what did uh, no, jeff get? nine oh nine I, never mind you said it you said investigation perception or? oh perception <laughs> yeah uh yeah jeff so that's 11 15. 11 it's 11 jeff what'd you get 15 okay you all hear this pretty easily uh as amon is talking to the ship right uh you just hear like a oh my god like a scream coming from down the beach as you look down, like after, uh, like past the shore, past the docks, you see that a uh, how many two bodies have been washed upon shore. I'm gonna. Yes. How how far away are they? Like maybe like fifty, 100. like a hundred, like a hundred feet, maybe. Yeah, you, you heard the bloody scream, and you can wait yeah. to see like there's two bodies, uh, like humanoid looking bodies that have washed upon the shore. Do the people who run the airships have, like, professional uniforms that would be distinguishable? Not that you would know of. No, not necessarily. Okay. Yeah, you guys don't really know much at all. You just found the quest. It pays a lot of gold, like 1,500 gold. So it's not... It's it's a good quest. So it was immediately just like, oh, take a thing and get on an airship and deliver it? Easy fucking money. All right, well, I'm going to bend over, pick up a handful of pebbles, and then fly over to them. Yeah, I'm I'm running over that way to okay. see if like there's so anything we can do for I them. Think, I think we're all following Yeah, you them. all rush over. Yeah. Uh, you see that a woman and her husband were just kind of taking a stroll along the beach, you know, enjoying the nice day, when suddenly two bodies washed upon shore. And you see that uh, they're soaking wet. It looks like they have been in the water for some time now. You see, as you are, it's very easy to see this without even ro making any kind of rolls. Uh, there are sword like wounds and gashes throughout their body. Uh, the one person looks like he has, like, uh, his face was, like, caved in with, like, some sort of blunt object of sorts. As you continue to investigate their bodies, the one thing that sticks out to you is you look on their chest, like where the little chest emblem is, on the uniform they're wearing. They're wearing, like, leather armor. You see what looks like pin that has a red raven on it yes well i think we found uh i lied redact that crew. oh as you're looking at their chest you see that the pin they're wearing instead has a crimson owl on it so not like red more of like a crimson but it's an owl 
not a raven. <laughs> but it's an owl, not a raven. Correct. The woman looks at all of you and goes, um, I'm going to let you guys take care of this. Bye. She takes off with her husband, like fucking terrified. As you turn around, you see that the, the screams There's obviously the attracted like the attention of like, you know, port guards as they're starting to make their way over. But before the these are these are just there. like they're totally totally dead. There's oh no they're safe. dead. There's like sword they're gashes. Dead, dead. Okay. It looks like somebody was like almost cut in half. Somebody has their face like caved in. Okay, shit went down. I'd like to loot the bodies. Roll an investigation check. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I like the way this man thinks. I like the way this That's man. That's a thinks. Nat twenty, sir. Am I gonna have to gang. be the voice of reason for this? Real quick. With a nat 20, before you can even be a voice of reason, TP, you see Jeff is already just, like, <laughs> patting him down. Uh, you start searching pretty much all over their, their, their body. Uh, and I it's hard to search around them and see yeah. if anything else washed up. Yeah. So there's not really too much that washed up besides their bodies. Uh, you do find what looks like some sort of, like, log book, uh, kind of like in the pockets of one. Uh, however, <laughs> uh, it is so waterlogged that, like, all the ink and everything is just kind of run off of it and the paper is just falling apart. The only distinguishable feature that you can really find on these bodies is the pin of the Crimson Owl that is, like, on their chest. Uh, as you continue to look through them, you know, again, they were definitely in some sort of fight, battle. It was bloody. Uh, something happened. They've probably been dead for maybe about a day, washed upon shore. Um, but you don't really find anything worth of value on them, pretty much whatsoever, besides, uh, you know, just whatever they're wearing. I like would, uh, Go ahead. I'd want to snatch one of the pins right off that guy just so I have it before the guards get there. Okay. So that they don't possibly take it from me. Gotcha. Okay, I'd like to use uh, prestidigitation to try and dry the log book. Okay, TP. Clean it, see if there's anything of value in it. Yeah, TP, what were you going to do or say? Oh, I have nothing to do. Okay. Uh, Jeff, you start to use press digitation to try to just, like, dry this logbook out, but it's taking a little bit of time. It doesn't happen instantaneous. It's waterlogged, you know. Uh, but it does begin to start drying up after time. Uh, but in the meantime, the guards, uh, the port guards from Silver Beach, uh, they, they rush over, and you see that they're very confused. There's a bunch of dwarven guards that say are just kind of, like, looking back and forth, like, what, where do these bodies come from? Where, what, what is, the, what, who are you three? We're, uh, we were just here on a quest, you know, we're, we're waiting for a boat to get here. And we heard these people scream, so we came running and found these dead bodies. Pretty much just the same as you. It's not normal. We never have anything like this happen here in Silver Beach. We're a simple port town. Uh, you see he looks down at the body. Is this, like, general of the um, the port. Uh, and you took the one pin off of one of the guys, but he does notice the pin on one of the other bodies and goes, Oh, the Crimson Owls, of course. Of course they're getting into trouble again. You you know who these guys are? Uh, yes, of course I know who they are. So, do they not like the the Red Ravens or? Oh, I that, that whole situation is a sticky and bloody mess. The Crimson Owls were actually one whole organization that you know where they were just adventurers. They were like an adventuring guild traveling the lands, you know, just doing what adventurers do. Uh, but I guess they had some sort of disagreement along the way, and they split kind of forces and. One half became the Red Ravens, and the others remained the Crimson Owls. It's it's a whole mess from my understanding. Uh, however, from what I've been told, they don't really get engaged in conflict or argument with each other. They may not be the same faction anymore because of disagreements, but neither of them are very, uh, uh, you know, violent groups. They're just adventuring guilds that happen to split in two ways. Granted, they've done some stupid things in the past and stuck, stuck their noses where they shouldn't belong, but... Nothing, like, morally evil. So they wouldn't just attack a what would appear to be a merchant ship for no reason. I couldn't say that they would. They're just travelers and adventurers, you know. They're not villains. They're not outlaws of sorts. If they were, we would, you know, the Realm Guard would probably take care of it if they were just a bunch of band of outlaws running around the realm. So something else attacked them. Very odd to see two bodies washed upon shore like this, though, of, of them. It looks like they were, he, sees, he starts inspecting the body. Looks like they got into something, someone or something. My biggest yeah. thing right now is that the wounds are inconsistent. 
Like you have a sword wound, you have blunt force, just a mix of everything. Yeah. So I don't think that it could be any random creature. I think that it'd have to be people at that point. From my understanding, also from what I was told, a, a ship never made it to the port when it should have. That is correct. Mm -hmm. That's the ship we're waiting on. Hmm. Hmm. Very Hence all these questions about the Red Ravens. Very interesting. And what ship were you waiting on? We were told it's a large boat with Red Raven sails. So you're waiting we're for... supposed to get something, go get an airship, go to the Mage College. That's all we you, know. You are waiting on a quest from the Red Ravens, or a ship from the Red Ravens to assist them in one of their quests. They never showed up, and lo and behold, about a day later... Two bodies of the Crimson Owl show up on shore. Yep. I hope this is not connected, as, like I said, the two factions split some time ago. But it appears this may be connected in some sort of way. Huh. Well, I guess that settles it then. Would you like to help out us and figure out what happened here? Because if there are bodies washed upon shore and there are ships going missing and you guys were supposed to have a job anyways, I'm assuming you're probably in some needs for some money. And if you can't complete the job you were, you know, trying to go on in the first place, well, you're never going to get paid. And I don't like that. Well. So let's let's go find whatever whatever needs to be found so that we can get our MacGuffin from the boat. Yes, the MacGuffin. Yes, very well. It's the whole story MacGuffin. So are you, are you contracting us then? Is that what's happening? Oh. Are you paying us more to help you? Well, I mean, we're going to pay you something to help. We have to keep the port clean and the port, you know, intact. And if there's okay. bloodshed as and long... shit going on in the ocean, then we can't have that here at our Portsmouth. Yeah, as long as the guard is willing to pay us. Oh, we share. always pay. Yes. So, and they're I very honest. That... Like, you, no. you have heard, you know, pretty much nothing but good things from Silver Beach Port. You know, they, you know, it's very cleanly. It's very kind of like, I want to say like noble, but it's not sketchy at all. They run a very honest business. Um, however, you know, they're so busy with running the honest business, they can't always take to the sea. You know, their jurisdiction is the port itself, not so much the open waters and like what happens out in the ocean. So uh, three adventurers like you would be perfect to go on a mission like this to see what's going on and maybe investigate. So are you going to give us cool badges and uniforms and things, or are uh, we just going out? No, this is a contract job. You'll get a 1099 at the end of the year. Are you going to let us borrow a ship? Wow, how else are you going to make it out in the ocean? I hope, but does one of you know how to sail, though? Let's go. I'm sure I can figure it out. Uh... Works for me. <laughs> uh, so... He follows you down, or sorry, he leads you down to the, the docks, and you, there is indeed uh, a Silver Beach uh, sloop they're going to allow you guys to kind of use, go out and travel and explore. It's not exactly combat ready. It's more like, you know, trade ship exploratory. You just kind of like go out and investigate, and you just like find whatever you can, and come back and kind of keep it that easy. So, all right. So this is what's going to happen. Go out, find what you can, come back, and we'll pay you. Very simple indeed. If you find Sounds out anything interesting, good. any information at all whatsoever, please let us know. If you come back empty-handed, not knowing what's going on, then I appreciate your efforts, and we'll still pay you for your time. Sounds good. Okay. Can we have a, a map and maybe a compass? Yeah, uh, he, he hands you, like, a map of, like, Altaran and, like, a, just a general compass, and there, there would be that kind of cool. stuff on the ship already to kind of, yeah, like, okay, cool. mark where you, you know, where you are or where you could go. Okay. So he hands you guys all the map, your materials, and everything you need, and hands you a sloop for you to head off into the ocean to try to figure out and look look for clues to see what the hell is going on. Hands us a what? A sloop. A sloop. It's kind of it's kind of boat. It's like a size of sailboat. It's kind of small. It's like okay. never played Sea of Thieves. No. Damn it, Jacob. <laughs> Fun. Fun. Hold on. But yeah, it's like a, you know... Sloop. I see you guys, like, putting in the chat all the time, like, hey, it's ready to set sail, and I'm just like... I'm gonna... I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Here, I just put it in the in the, in the the chat. That's like a, that's a, that's what a sloop looks like. Sloop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Right. Yeah, it's a little, sh little, little ship. That's all it really is, so... Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's a nice, li nice little all ship. All right, how you guys doing that, this? Who's piloting? Who's it, driving? What are you guys doing? Does it have weaponry on board? Is no. it armed? Dang, so, uh, 
I would I would go down to like whatever tape kind of table situation got spread out the map and and kind of chart a course essentially from because I know yeah, where the on, boat came from. Yeah, I know where on we the are. map you would see like in white dots um, like where the general like routes are that boats would go. So you can kind of like look and see like, all right, cool. It was coming from Norwood. This is usually the route they take from Norwood to Silver Beach. Cool. So I'd kind of direct us and you and say, all right, we're going to go in this kind of way, you know, go that way okay. and point off in whatever, you know, right, right. what is that, west? Uh, yeah, west. All right, who was sailing the boat? Who was the actual one doing the steering and the sailing? Nobody, nobody can stop drive. Yeah, you're currently just like dock still. Just like you, you mapped out where you're going. Who's driving the boat now? I think I can figure it out. <laughs> so I don't think Jeff is strong enough to turn the wheel. Turn the wheel. TP, roll an intelligence check. See if you can figure it out. Intelligence, let's go. Oh, jeez. It's a nine. TP, you it's just like, I got nine. this. Uh, I don't got this. You just can't figure it out. The steering wheel is definitely All meant right. for, like, somebody human-sized, not Rentucky size. So, like, the... the... Four foot. Come on. <laughs> no. Yeah, your, your, your head is, like, at the fucking, like, center. You're just, like, doing one of these. You're just like, I can't see or move. Damn it. So, as I see this happening... I'm, I'm trying to, like, go up and grab the steering wheel. Then I look back and, like... Yeah, your, your feet are happening. dangling off of the fucking. <laughs> yeah, you're just holding on to it like a pull up. So as I see this happening, I'm gonna walk up behind him, pick him up by like the scruff of his neck, and just go, go untie the rope <laughs> and put him back <laughs> down. Yeah. And I'm gonna take the wheel and, and see if I can't yeah, get, this, on, get us going. Check. While he's doing that, I'm gonna cast a large reduce on myself. Okay. Take a little bigger. Okay. Eight. <laughs> Come on, you can't figure it out either. <laughs> TP and you're just saying, we're not like, going to be able to get out of work? this port. How do you right. work? <laughs> Jeff, are you trying? We're not going to be able to get 11. out of this port. Jeff, with an 11, you figure it out. You're like, you guys are fucking idiots. You lower the sails and just like, help me, like, help me raise the fucking anchor. You guys raise the anchor and you start taking off at west. Well, two nines in a row. <laughs> And you start oh, you know. making your way out west. Jeff, you are in charge of steering. All right. All right. So you're starting to continue out west, heading into the deep ocean. Very clear, very nice day. You don't see any ships in the distance. You don't see anything that kind of sticks out to you as of like, like a danger of sorts. However, I would like everybody to roll me a perception check after being on the sea for maybe like, you know, three, four hours. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. It's a I five. Rolled a one. I rolled a one. So you got a twelve. No, I got twelve. Amon got a twelve. Jeff got a five. TP got a one. Yeah. I, got a, I mean, I got a three, That's but so I rolled one, a nat yeah. one. <laughs> Amon, uh, you were the only one that really notices this. Jeff's too busy steering. <laughs> TP is just staring off into the distance. Uh, however. You see, approaching quickly, because you're kind of going at, like, a, de a pretty decent speed, you see what looks like a shark in the water, but it's not, like, swimming. It's not, like, moving around. It looks like it's kind of, like, on its side, just kind of, like, floating in the water, almost as if it's dead. I'm going to immediately relay this information, and whatever kind of direction... That it is like off the bow. I'm gonna say, hey, go more to the right, yeah, to the, or the right, left, yeah. or whatever, so that we go towards it, mm -hmm. because that's seeming like the direction of our problems. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna steer that way. Yeah. So you steer the boat to the right slightly, and you start approaching the shark that looks like it's like just dead, floating in the water. What are we looking for? Uh, it's, I was wanted to see how maybe this thing died. Maybe it's the same as. As those guys, you know, maybe something or someone is just attacking stuff at random out here. Hey, okay, let's drop the anchor then. Right. You drop the anchor real quick and you stop in the middle of the ocean. The waves kind of crash against the ship and you park right next to the shark that is just kind of floating next to the ship on its side uh, above the water. Uh, as you look at it, Amon, you specifically, as you investigate it more because you did see it in the first place, you would see that his eyes are like not like 
wide open like they're dead or like completely closed they're kind of like slowly like kind of like blinking like in and out of life you see the tail is like slightly like slightly moving as if it's like trying to move but it's just kind of like laying here like lifeless and hurt it doesn't look does it look like it's been injured like in a cut slash it bash. looks like it is hurt slash exhausted doesn't look like it was directly in battle um but you can tell it's uh it's definitely like injured in some sort of way and then okay Looks more exhausted yeah. than any of it. Hmm. What do? I am... This is a shark. Yes. Yeah, this is just a shark. It's like a hunter shark. Okay. So I am going to push it away from the boat and say we got to go in the direction that it was coming from because it was running from something, it seems. So you push it away from the boat with like an oar or whatever. And as you push it, you notice it does kind of like flop and like turn. And as it kind of turns to one side, you see like the fin on one side of it is like completely like lopped off. Oh yeah, no, that thing is not long for this world. Whatever whatever got those guys and this shark is probably in that direction and pointing right. you know, in the direction it was coming from. Put it out of its misery and raise the anchor. Yep, so who's going to be the one to do it? I mean, you're right there. Why don't you do it? All I have is blunt force, so... <laughs> you yeah, have the so sword. Yeah, I, I just reach out with my sword and just and just end it. Yeah, reach over and stab. Uh, do me a favor, roll to hit. Uh, 17. 17 hits as you stab into the shark. And as you do, you quickly just like swift stab in, stab out. And as you do that, you pierce the shark. Immediately, as you see it kind of like begin to like fall limp and die, it kind of like wild shapes into a human it was just like waiting, floating in the water, just like bloody and hurt, just like oh. barely alive, just like backwards. Like this. And it looks like there's uh, he's wearing the same outfit that uh, the bodies were wearing that got washed up on shore. Is he within arm's reach? Oh, yeah, you can reach down, like grab him, pull him up. Yeah, but I but I could reach out and touch him, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lay on hands. I'm saving this guy right yeah, now. You put, you reach your hands down and lay on hands the guy and just... And, and just yank begins, him like, up splash. onto the boat. <coughs> Pull him up from the boat. <laughs> <sighs> Who are you? you... He pulls a sword immediately, but it just stumbles backwards and falls. He goes, get away, get away. No. Uh, uh, who? Who? Relax. <laughs> Relax. What happened? I tried to get away. I tried to get away. I tried to kill my friends. They couldn't stop him, but I got away, but I couldn't make too weak to make it back. Oh, Who fuck. did? It's fucking red, it's fucking red raven people with the box. They fucking they got the fucking fuck, fuck. Who are you? The the red ravens attacked you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who who are you? Okay, we were contracted to do a job. Don't worry about it. We were waiting for the. For the boat from the ravens but you're the red you ravens gotta... he stands up so he's, he's hurt still he like stumbles backwards he's against like the edge of the ship just like fuck away from me all right i'm gonna use I'd... my uh or walk over and use my fate presence i need a wisdom saving throw ba, 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 ba. Oh. 18. Damn it, that's pass <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got nothing. Who are you guys? Why are you here? What are you, what are you doing? Hand him, hand him the badge. Hand him the badge. You right, I, I uh, pick, I'd, yeah, exactly. I, I pulled a little red owl out of my pocket and go. We found two of your guys dead on the beach. But you, what? We came to find out what's going on because we, all, I, all I know is I was waiting for a box. The box didn't show up. And I've had a lot of trouble since that box didn't show up. The ship Let's, was late. You were. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You guys were. You were. You're all. You were also 
gonna work with the Red Ravens because of that fucking box? We work with whoever pays us the most, man. I work for money. Yeah, the shit the, we are. Of course you work for money. Those bastards, they have tons of money. Of course they have tons of money because they can pay everybody off to do whatever the fuck they want to do so they can have more goddamn power. Hey, it was a don't ask questions quest, so... That's we how didn't we didn't ask questions. Sort of... That's how most of them are. All right, so you wanna... do you know which way the ravens were heading and maybe we can they were... take revenge or, or figure something out? They were... Why would I tell... If you're working with the ravens, why would I tell you anything? What's stopping you from just killing me and just working with them and getting money? Because we just saved your ass. Right, did I not... I may I may have been the one that poked you there, but that was when I thought you were a shark. Uh, right, I was I was ending your misery as a shark. Right, one of you can go ahead and roll me a persuasion check. One of you can. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do that. Those goes. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. How? What? What is your persuasion? Uh, plus six. So okay. Meta. So, <laughs> plus two. Twenty six. Right. There you go. Christ. Twenty. Yeah, he <laughs> he immediately just kind of like. <sighs> okay. You're right. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm being very just brash and irrational right now. You gotta understand, we 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 found information that they were heading to Silver Beach, and they were gonna trade it off there to somebody somewhere to take the Blue River College. Okay, but that's that was not us. Yeah. Okay, whatever. You were contracted, found a quest. What they do? That's how they. That's how they stay fucking so under the tracks without getting caught. They just contract random adventurers through the Codex of Quest to go and do their dirty work for them, so they don't get fucking caught. They pay them a bunch of gold and stay under the radar to get their dirty work done. Okay, we got information they were heading to Silver Beach. We were supposed to intercept them, but they overpowered us because they had more people on board than we thought they did, and they killed two of my friends, and I was able to escape just in time. But they were supposed to go to Silver Beach. Are you telling me they didn't arrive there? Nope. They never got there. Where the fuck did they go? That's what we're trying to find out. Here, he, here we are looking, bud. He stands up and kind of like... The, the Silver Beach Guard sent us out to figure out what happened. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The Silver Beach Guards are working with us. We had a whole ambush there planned for them. Really? Yeah, the Red Ravens, they're not good people. The uh, the general there was a little cagey about telling us who the good guys and bad guys were because we were trying to ask questions. Because I didn't know you originally were the same. Yeah, years and years ago, we were known as the Crimson Owls, just an adventuring guild. And eventually we came across a mysterious artifact we found in a mountain. We didn't know what it was. We wanted to study it. We wanted to harness its power and use it for good and figure out what this could do. But the Red Ravens, they stole it from us. They split from our guild. They wanted it for power. We wanted it to save the world, fix things, do whatever we wanted to do with it to make the world a better place, not use it for power. They're claiming they want to take it to the Blue River College so they can study it for... Uh, it's magic and figure out what it can do. No, they don't want to take it to the Blue River College so they can study it and figure out what it can do. They want to take it there so they can use it against them to see how powerful it is to take over the Blue River College. If they can take over the biggest mage school in the entirety of the realm with all the magic items, scrolls, and history they have there with the use of this item, then God knows what else they can do. They need to be stopped. Hmm... All right, I'm going to turn to Ammon and TP and be like, all right, what do you want to do? I, I mean, this is a, a lot of gold on the line here, but it sounds like they're pretty bad people. I was starting to believe at the beginning, though, that no, no legal job would be paying this much. I'm in favor of hunting them down and... Uh, Trying to right the wrongs. Yeah, he looks at uh, TP and he goes, uh, yes, you're correct. No legal job would pay this much. That's how they get away with all of this. The Red Ravens, they're sneaky, they're sly, they claim to be the good guys, they claim to want to save the world, but they don't. They want power. 
That's all they want, and we've been trying to stop them ever since. However, power creates greed. There are more people in the Red Ravens than there are in the Crimson Owls now, because they convinced so many of them, or so many of us, to go with them. Therefore, they have more money, they have more resources. The Crimson Owls used to be a very noble adventuring guild, traveling the lands, trying to save people and help people. We wanted to be heroes of the world. And they claim they still want to be. However, they want to do that through power, by whatever means possible. Money makes people do crazy things without question. I can't tell you how many times that good people like yourselves have been caught up in bad situations because of them, because they offer a substantial amount of gold for very simple tasks. So what exactly does this artifact do then? So he kind of like sits and so he stands up, you know, a little more relaxed now, puts a sword away. He says, to be honest with you, we don't know. We found this box in a deep mountain north of Haxos. They were exploring, looking for, you know, rumors of a dragon that had been, you know, just kind of floating around the lands. We never found the dragon. We went to the cave where the dragon was supposed to be and found this instead. Some sort of ethereal metal box with scriptures and runes on the side of it. And when we opened it, I can't even explain. Did anyone All... touch it? Plenty of people touched it, yes. And what happened to them? Well, again, when we touch slash open it up, all of a sudden, flashes of magic and lights just immediately just took over our minds and our presence but for what felt like forever, but it was just a mere instance. And in that instance, when we touched this box, we saw peace in the world. It was like a vision of the future. We saw life. We saw nature. We saw people living in harmony. There was no war. There was no famine. There was no disease. There was no illness. There was no crime. And then when the box closed, it all went away. Hmm. Visions of something from this box. However, that being said, we tried to examine it ourselves. We tried to. We lost some people doing that. It showed us a vision of a peaceful future, of a, of a wondrous world we could have. However, when examined further, investigated further, would beyond mere touching and opening, people just disappeared, gone, disintegrated. It's as if the box knows when somebody's being greedy. Hmm. So if these red ravens are as greedy and power-hungry as you say, it sounds like if any of them touch the box, they're just going to disappear. Well, they're smart. Chances are they're probably not opening it. Hmm. That's why so they let me want ask to take it this. to the college. They're going to leave it in the mages and sorcerers' hands at the college for them to do the dirty work for them to figure out what it can do, because they are honestly more akin to magic than we are, or ever have been. Do you think if they didn't show up at the dock, they might have just sailed around and kept sailing to get over to to the mage college i don't find that likely it would take you know weeks and upon weeks to even get that far hmm. i doubt they had so enough supplies. They, they, they probably wouldn't even have enough supplies to even make it that far if they tried where would they have gone where would they have gone well if i had to take a guess i'd probably say if they've stopped somewhere to one of their outposts where their outposts are I imagine it's probably where an old Crimson Owl outpost was, which could be Timberview, which is south of here. We have a speakeasy. We used to have a speakeasy there until, you know, again, a lot of Crimson Owls left to be with Red Ravens and took a lot of our outposts with them. If that's one of the outposts they took in Timberview, then chances are they went there to supply up and figure out a new route of operations. And that's where oh. we're going. I, say, I, I want you to stay out. listen to me very carefully I want you to stay hidden at all costs do not do not come out unless I tell you to do you understand yeah I feel like I need to fucking rest and eat good he goes below deck to try Mark to heal location. himself up 
Yeah, you pull out your map and you find Timberview on the map. On the map, it's a few hours away. Which you know, as you look right. at it more, you're like, that makes sense. If they were on their way here and they had to divert path, this is the next closest place they could probably go. That's out, like you know, not within uh, you know easy tracking distance. All right, then let's raise the anchor, lower the sails, and get on our way. You begin making your way to Timberview. And this man that you picked up, that's part of the Crimson Owls, he does fall asleep downstairs. He's been pretty much floating uh, for about a day now. Uh, the only reason he stayed in shark form was so he could breathe and, like, you know, not completely Not die? Dry. Yeah, not die, essentially. However, he was very tired and injured. Uh, but now that he's on boat, he is able to sleep normally again because he's back in human form. Uh, he's obviously some sort of, like, druid of sorts. Making your way south towards Timberview, you continue to approach... And you see that, oddly enough, the ports and the docks are now shut down. You see that there are a few guard ships, uh, just like small, like, sloop-like ships that you have out yourself that are kind of like have a small perimeter outside the dock, and as you approach closer, they kind of wave you down for you to slow down. And you hear one kind of speak out through, like, a megaphone of sorts, saying, Hey, we're, we're sorry, but the Timberview docks are shut down for the next three days. Please uh, turn uh, turn around and head to the nearest port, either Ringdale or, or Silver Beach, and please return in the next few days. Interesting. Is the ship with... Is the Red Raven ship... Can we see the Red Raven ship anywhere? No, you can't. You guys are kind of far in the ocean still. You can see the dock in the distance. Um, and there are a few ships that are parked there. Um, however, you know, the sails on all of them are up, so you can't really tell what's what. If we were to call out, would they hear us? Yeah, you guys aren't far from them. They have, like, you know, you're within, like, speaking distance. Like, they're kind of, like, yelling through, like, a like a megaphone type thing. But you could definitely kind of, like, yell back. Uh, you know, just a mixture of uh, races on these boats. Uh, Timberview... Uh, is on a very small continent to the south of the realm. It is actually the home of the Minotaurs, uh, or at least it was for the longest time until the Minotaurs started opening up their uh, their island to other people that were part of trade and part of deals. They were a very secluded kind of like clan of people until they started being more trusting of people in the realm once war started to die down. So ever since then, you know, various people inhabit this island, and it's a very small place of inhabitants, maybe like a couple thousand people, if that, on the island in general. Uh, civilizations here are still kind of being built. The Minotaurs obviously have their areas where they live, like in the mountains and the hills and, and everything else where they would reside, uh, but that would explain like why there's so few people here. Timberview is a very small port town as well, just like, you know, Silver Beaches. Uh, there is another uh, village that is also in the island that's called Riptide Bay, or Tide Rip Bay, uh, but that's just like, you know, another standard town, but they're still kind of like in the process of, of being built and populated. All right, I want to um, call out and say... We were contracted by the Red Ravens to carry a box, and we, they, their ship never made it, and so we're checking out all the ports near Silver Beach. We were supposed to carry something to the Blue River College for them, and we wanted to see if they were here. Do me a favor, if you could, and roll me a persuasion check. It's a 12. You see that this man kind of, like, leans over to the elf that he's on with this boat. Uh, there's, like, three boats that are, like, on a perimeter, just kind of, like, going back and forth to kind of, like, you know, just to make sure the perimeter is secure. And they kind of, like, whisper something. You can't say what they're saying. And you can't hear what they're saying. goes, um, hold on one, hold on one second. We'll make our way over to you. And you see the boat slowly starts approaching your boat. It kind of parks side by side next to you. And he goes, all right, now we can speak a little more, um, without yelling or through, you know, megaphones of sorts. You say you're with the Red Ravens. Oh, yeah, we picked up a we're, quest to help them out. To reiterate, we're not with the Red Ravens. We've just been contracted them through the guild. We were right, supposed right. to meet them at Silver Beach, and they never showed up. Oh. Well, you see that he uh, kind of nods and goes... It's good to know. It's good to hear. And you see he takes uh, like uh, his collar and kind of like pulls it down, and you see a red raven pin on his shirt and lifts it back up and says, Yeah, about a day ago, uh, a sh one of our ships landed here in, in Timberview. They had gotten into it with some of those Crimson Owls, uh, and they decided to avert the path and head here instead of going to Silver Beach because they figured they'd be ambushed there. 
currently at the Speakeasy, the Timberview Library. We'll let you through. Uh, just act cool and act, act calm. We'll let you through. We'll make your way to the Timberview Library. And uh, meet up with them and figure out something together. It's good to, good to see more allies here that are, you know, even if you're just working on a contractual basis, good to have people on our side to, to help accomplish this mission. And that is uh, DM speak for he got a nat one on his opposed charisma check. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, I just made it. There goes that combat. Um, <laughs> um, uh, he doesn't yeah, want to fight us anyway. Yeah, so he lets you through to the Timberview so port. I'm going to, uh, while we're still approaching the dock, I'm going to talk to Eamon and be like, hey, you need to make sure you go down and tell him that we're parking the ship and that's got here and i got and a i got a good plan for that yeah oh yeah i got a good plan for that all right so the the small ships that were controlling the perimeter they kind of move out of your way and let you go to the dock um you see they kind of shoot like uh like a, a green flare in the air for the people at the dock to kind of recognize that you're coming in so they know you have permission to go through um it's pretty common uh knowledge that through like the realm uh the way that the ship rights kind of work is when somebody's coming through that has permission when it's a secure area they'll fire a green flare for yes they have permission they'll fire a red flare for intruders so when you see the green flare you know that you have kind of clearance to go through uh and it's going to take you i don't know maybe a few minutes to get there so you do have a few minutes to go down to talk to this crimson owl man that you saved from the ocean right so i'm going to go down there to him i am going to to talk to him tell him exactly what we're doing take his red owl pin from him and tell him to wild shape into whatever tiny little critter he can mouse cat fox you know whatever something little that can like hide in the ship somewhere and tell him to just stay hidden he speaks up and says well would i be able to come with you just wild shape into something small hide in a backpack or something if the Red Ravens are here and they have taken over, you know, they indeed do have control of this, you know, meeting location that we had for our guild in the past, then I could perhaps gather some very important intel and information to bring back to my people. Hmm. It's not a bad idea. I guess, I guess that could work. But give me that, give me that owl pin just in case yeah he hands it to you and you see he then wild shapes into like a little mouse that just kind of like you know scurries up to you cool i'm gonna i'm gonna pick the mouse up and put it in one of the pouches i got and take the the pin and put it in the same pouch as the other one yeah all right and so then back up on 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 deck and right. some time goes by and you make your way to the timberview port and you are you know help with uh assisted with docking they tie your boat to the, uh, to the to the dock with ropes. Uh, the anchor is down. The sails are raised, and you see the same ship that stopped you initially also pulls up alongside of you. And this this human and this elf both get off of the ship as well, and they speak to the ship right and say, "Hey, um, they need to go to a specific location. We know where they need to go. We'll just direct them. You know, we got this." And uh, they kind of exchange a handshake, and you are more than welcome to follow them. So yeah, so that's uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Is just follow these guys who said they're they're gonna take us to where we need to go yep but the game plan yep. of everybody else as well yep because yeah, at this point they they still totally think that we're a hundred percent red raven, red raven <laughs> affiliated cool guys yes <laughs> all right yeah so thanks for being a sucker <laughs> <laughs> thank you nat one uh, so some time goes by, they walk you through the small little village, and they uh, you enter into a library. Uh, and as you enter in, they go to the back of the library, and you see that this man that was on the ship, he walks up to a book, and he kind of pulls the book down that has a little red raven on the spine of the book. And as he pulls it, a click happens, and this door opens up to, like, a speakeasy of sorts. And he goes, all right, let's go on in. Sam, I'm going to walk in the door. Yep. Uh, as you walk in, it's a staircase that goes downwards uh, to, like, you know, like an underground, like, tavern of sorts. Uh, and as you continue to walk in, you do see that there are what looks like emblems of, like, uh, the the Crimson Owl kind of, like, emblem that you have seen. However, like, red spray paint over cross of them. And then, like, next to that, you see, like, like a makeshift, uh, like, red raven kind of, like, spray painted next to it instead. And you kind of see, like, this graffiti and this, like, uh, sketchiness kind of gone throughout the entire uh, like alleyway as you go to, or this uh, staircase as you continue to go down. 
As you make your way down, you do see, indeed, this once used to be, you can tell, a very kind of like more pristine, higher class tavern. However, ever since the Red Ravens kind of like, you know, took over and split ways, it's kind of, I wouldn't say gone to shit, but it's definitely more ragtag and uh, sketchy looking versus like, you know, high class and like very cleanly put together. There are a lot of people down here drinking. There's some music playing. There's definitely a bartender, barmaid. Um, you know, uh, just very kind of dirty but lively tavern that's underneath the library. Uh, the shipwright, or sorry, this, this captain of the sloop that stopped you initially says, All right, well, uh, last time I checked, they were down here. They were in the back uh, having a meeting in the, in, the, in the back room. Just walk up and knock three times, and they will admit you in. I need to get back to the ship. All right. So being in this bar, I'm definitely getting the... The, the vibe that these guys are definitely these they're bad guys these are not like the good upstanding citizen type of guys right uh you can roll an insight check if you guys would like me to you guys would like to roll insight sixteen what about Jeff and TP oh uh I got a fifteen that's a 19. 16, 19. All right, cool. Yeah, it's definitely like, oh, yeah, this is this is like black market, bad vibe type shit. Like, this is no bueno, Sweet. not good. Um, As you continue to approach forward, you are kind of like shoulder to shoulder with people. It's a smaller tavern. It's very lively, very dirty. Uh, people are drinking, obviously drunk in here. Uh, but you kind of push your way through, and you do see that there is a door. Again, same thing. You saw the Crimson Owl, but instead it's kind of like, X'd out with spray paint underneath it, you see like a spray painted red raven. Uh, who would like to knock? I'm gonna very, very commandingly, and with you know, with the authority that my army rank provides me, I'm gonna pound on this door three times. Okay. Yeah, you just heavy knock on the door three times, and you see a little slider opens up, and you see that just a set of eyes. You can't tell from who or from what's just kind of like look at you and go, Can I help you? Uh, we're here because we were told that this is where you, the, the ship was with the box that we were supposed to pick up. We got a little worried when you were a day and a half late. We came looking ship and we found you. Box. Yeah. One Red second. Red Raven. Yeah, one second. He closes it again. Like a, like a minute or two goes by and he opens it back up. He goes, what, uh, what port were you at? So, Silver, Silver Beach. Silver Beach Port. Yeah. You we're the, waiting for you. You got, the, you got the contract that was on the board that you picked up? Yeah. Uh, I assume I'm the one that has it in my pocket. Where whichever you guys one of us would all it, probably each have one because you probably keep oh, from yeah. like, different locations because the codex like it appears everywhere. Is everywhere? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'd pull out my copy and just be like, "Here you go." Yep. And show and just you know yeah, show it to him. Very well. Closes it. You hear <laughs> door open. <laughs> door opens up, and you see in this room there's a long oval table, and sitting in the center of it is indeed this ethereal box. It's silver. It looks very. It just looks heavy because it's made out of metal, and you see that there are like ethereal runes and markings that are all etched along the side of it, glowing in different like fashion, just kind of like pulsating. Sitting around this table, you see there are about you know eight different people. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, five of which are wearing like the Red Raven kind of like attire, you know, kind of like darked out leather armor with the Red Raven pins. And you see there are three others um, that are also sitting at the table of various race. I. Uh, one is a Goliath, one is a Tiefling, and one is a... Uh, hold on, I got a thing. This is why I do pre-recorded. Goliath, Tiefling, what the fuck was the other guy's race? Goliath, Tiefling, hold on one second, I'll tell you right now. Okay. Another people that I've played before. Yes. <laughs> on a board, damn it, there we go. There we go. Uh, so, okay, let me restart that. <clears throat> Sitting around this table, you see there are about eight different people. There are five of which are wearing the kind of the same garb and outfit of the rest of the Red Ravens, black like leather with you know the Red Raven pins. Three of which, however, are not. It looks like they're just wearing basic adventuring gear. Uh, there's a Tiefling, there is a Goliath, and there is also a Fire Genasi that look like they're just kind of like sitting, looking at each other, uh, like waiting on like official word or discussion. Um. But as you look at them, you can tell they all look, they look a little kind of sketched out, not really knowing what exactly is going on. Uh, specifically, the tiefling is kind of just looking very angrily around at everybody. It, uh, so the only two tieflings in the room are me and this other one, right? Yes. 
So in Infernal, I'm immediately going to say to him, because I can see that he's at, like he's annoyed and kind of like, what the fuck's going on here? I'm going to ask him what's up in Infernal so that nobody else can understand what we're saying to each other. Uh, cool. Jeff can't understand. Jeff knows Infernal. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff knows what I'm saying, yeah, but that's Jeff okay. Uh, you speak out in Infernal. Do you like whisper or do you just speak out in Infernal out loud? Yeah, kind of. I kind of just look at him and like, you know, get, I get as close as I can to him. Like, yo, what, what, what's going on? Why, why, why were you guys late? Because I'm assuming that they were the ones that were supposed to bring it on their boat to yeah. me. He looks up at you and says, back in Infernal, what'd he say? <laughs> he looks up at you in Infernal and says, shouldn't have come here. Why? What, what do you mean? I have a feeling this box is bad news. Oh, I know. I know it's bad news. Nobody gets paid this much money for good stuff. I suggest we sit, all of us sit and wait and see what they say to learn more information. All right. Sounds good to me. But if, if shit goes down, just get out of my way. He looks at you and goes, you will be the one that I need to get out of my way. He's also a paladin, so it's like a team play paladin <laughs> dick measuring contest right now. Uh, just like looking at each other. <laughs> so, uh, very stern, just like, no, you stay out of my way. I, I, I look at it with, with, you know, with that like, all right, all right, I, I see you, I see you. Gonna... Kind of look and, and just back off him. I want to step in and infertile and be like, all right, you two can have your dick measuring contest later. Let's see what's going on. Okay. So you all sit down at the table and you see that the Red Ravens close and lock the door again. And somebody kind of stands up from the edge of the table. And this is a dwarven man. He stands, he cracks his neck. He's kind of standing on his chair so he can be at eye level with everybody. And he goes, all right, y'all. Well, it appears we got some new allies here. Thank you so much for coming. It appears that you are here under contractual basis, but I really hope that, you know, you choose to join our ranks and our cause after you learn more about our wondrous gift that the heavens have sent us. But we are here because there was some tomfoolery in our plans. Somebody knew we were going to Silver Beach to deliver us to, I believe it was you three, right? Yep. Somebody knew we were going to Silver Beach to drop this off to U3, who contracted to take this to the Blue River College via airship. And we diverted here and made our way to this, you know, speakeasy that used to belong to those wretched Crimson Owls. And you see when he says wretched Crimson Owls, uh, the rest of the, the Red Ravens just like let out a, <laughs> like a chuckle um, as they all kind of like laughed at themselves and goes, Now, you must be wondering what it is so important about this box and why you've gone so far out of your way to figure out what's going on, am I right? Well, a little bit, but really it's the gold. Well, no amount of gold can pay for what this box here we think can do. Well, some time ago I when think we were you all should double my pay then. Oh, let's talk a little <laughs> more first. Money does indeed talk, but let's explain a little further. Some time ago when we were all known as the Crimson Owls, we were out venturing in the Haxonia Mountains and came across this mysterious gift from the heavens. We don't know what it did, but we all knew one thing. It's magical as all hell. And it's got some damn holy power to it. And we want to use this power to liberate and save the world. No more famine, no more disease, no more illness. No more chaos, no more war. We want to get this to the Blue River College. We want them to examine what this can do. We want to harness this holy and divine power. So that way we can use it. No more wars, no more death, no more illness, no more disease, nothing. We have been gifted with holy power here. You see that he kind of like pushes the box forward. He goes, just touch it. You'll see what I mean. I'm going to lean over to the paladin and say, Hey, uh, do you have detect good and evil on you? <laughs> I, I do, as a matter of fact. So, so I'm going to, uh, I, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach out and touch it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I got that, but I'm gonna touch it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna touch it, cause I, 
I have a feeling everything's gonna be okay. Yeah. You reach yeah, out and I touch, it. touch it. Too. All right, Jeff, you're gonna touch it too. TP, you're gonna touch it. Yeah. No. Okay. I'm not gonna <laughs> touch Come it. on, Jeff. You guys kind of close your eyes, and you know it's not. You get like this weird, like intrusive thought of like, I do want to touch that, but like, I'm not forcing you to. This is 100 percent doing by will. It's not like a you know a roll or anything. You know, you can choose not to do it if you don't want to. Uh, when you place your hand on it, you close your eyes. And just like explained to you by the the man on the ship, all of a sudden, just like you see flashes of just like arcane and magic and just like holy energy and a good just overall like euthmetic feeling. And you take your hand off of it, and you swear you saw glimpses of just like flashes of like what could be the future, the past, the present. We don't know of just holy like like lands and peace and justice throughout the world. And when you take your hands off of it, this dwarven man goes, Ah, yeah, see? Told you. I'm going to look at him and go, You touch it. Oh, very well. He puts his hand on it, closes his eyes, and lifts again and goes, That sight never gets old. However, the one thing we can't do is open it. We open it one time. And it's like we were, It's like we were granted and given the opportunity to open it one time. Now, if it's open again, people have died. And I'm not sure if it's because we don't understand it or how to use it or what's even inside. But I feel like taking it to Blue River College, they might have the answers and the magic to safely open this and examine its magical capabilities. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Brotar. I'm the leader of the Red Ravens. And I'm offering to all of you, and he looks at you three and the three from the previous session and says... Would y'all like to join our cause to help save, to help liberate, to help free, and to help cleanse this world of anything evil and unholy? What do you mean by liberate? Oh, well, what do you think? War plagues this land. Chaos always plagues this realm. It always has since the dawn of man. Creatures from space, liches, undead unholy kings mm. constantly attacking the world this could eliminate all evil when you say cleanse it makes it almost sounds like you plan on participating Killing everybody. in genocide that doesn't agree with you not at all what I'm saying I'm saying cleanse as in diseases gone illness gone Necrosis was an illness and disease that we thought long gone for a long time through the realm, but it's back again. Yeah, with, with that, Amon I'm, I'm I'm grumbles very angrily at the mention of that. He, he doesn't like... As you were on grumbles like very angrily, Amon, you look down, and you see that the mouse, this, like, uh, this crimson owl that was, uh, you know, kind of like hidden in like your pocket, real quick scuttles and like jumps out of your pocket, hits the ground, and starts making a beeline for the fucking door. I'm gonna act surprised as hell and go, what the hell was that? Okay. <laughs> uh, you see everybody just like, just chuckles and laughs like, ah, yeah, we got those around here. Don't worry. We're trying to clean the place up. Now, as you sit here and listen to Brotar and everything he's saying, it's, I'll just explain, very conflicting. Because you're getting the same story kind of from both sides here. The Red Ravens, they want to use it for the good. They want to, you know, use it for, you know, making the world a safer and better place. However, maybe, you know, they're saying it more calmly with different verbiage. But the Crimson Owls are also saying the same thing. Very confusing. It's very interesting. Besides, before you, what, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask Brotar. And what do the Crimson Owls then want to do with this box? Oh. All they want is fucking power. That's all they've ever wanted. Why do you think we separated? Why do you think we left? Hmm. We found this together. We should have used it together, but instead they wanted to just make their fighters and their guild more powerful. That's all they wanted to do. Greed. That's all they are. That's why we left. That's Why, why do you think there's more of us? Why do you think there's more... Red Ravens, and there are Crimson Owls because we believe in justice, in freedom, in peace. 
Hmm. Uh, Jeff, what were you going to say? I was going to ask him, uh, what makes, why, why should we trust you? Why, what makes you think you're the one that to bring this about? Because in my experience, the masses have always been swayed by greed and not a sense of justice. And you claim to have more followers. So, so how do you explain that? Why, why do you think you're the one that is going to bring about this utopia that everyone desires? It's not about me or just the Red Ravens bringing about the utopia. We don't want the credit for this. We just want it used in the right ways, and we don't want it falling into the wrong hands. We trust ourselves and only ourselves to do this mission. I'm That's gonna, I'm gonna pull the two, two crimson owl ba- pins out of my pocket and throw them on the table and go. Well, the two crimson owls that I killed said the exact same thing, but you know, opposite direction. Calling you guys the bad guys, and you want the power and all of this. When you pull out the two Crimson Owl badges and throw them on the table, you see that the other Tiefling, the um, Fire Genasi, and the Goliath all immediately just, like, tense up slightly and just, like, all look at each other. Only really you guys notice this. They all just kind of stop and look at each other. And then kind of like eyeball you guys. And you see Brotar goes. Two Crimson Owls you killed. Yep. Two of them. That's funny. Because these three over here told me they killed two Crimson Owls too. Well, if they didn't finish to prove the job. it though. Uh, you see... Uh, when you, when TP says they didn't prove it, you see he holds up an order form that's from one of the Crimson Owls with the directions of where they were going to be heading to Silver Beach. He says, then how do they give me this? What makes you think there are only two Crimson Owls in the area? (laughs) They used to operate in this area. Why wouldn't there be more than two? Maybe these were two different ones. You don't know that. I'm just saying I found it a little coincidental that they come in here and say that there was three. They killed two. One is gone. You come in here and say we also killed two shortly after they did. Like I said. It wasn't shortly. It's been like two days. Shortly is like a day or two. They didn't finish the job. When I found them, they were still alive. I made sure that wasn't the case anymore. Oh, so you are saying they are the same people? I would assume they were not doing so great when I found them. But I found them, and I asked them questions, and I finished the job. Huh. Do me a favor, roll me deception. We should have just stuck for with one story. <laughs> Not 20. No fucking way. <laughs> you see that initially Brotar was getting a little frustrated, just like, something going on here. But he goes, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm paranoid. I'm just paranoid. You're right. There could have been way more of them Crimson Owls floating around here somewhere. We don't know where they're at. There could be fucking some in this room for all we know, right? Am I right, guys? And everybody gets to, like, chuckle and laugh. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> And he goes, am I right, guys? He oh, yeah. Laughs yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, laughing. Yeah. Hard. Belly laugh. Deep belly laugh. Yeah. And you Absolutely. see. Absolutely. <laughs> you see, as he says, am I right, guys, one more time. He looks over at the door to where the mouse was. And you see, as soon as the mouse like goes to try to crawl under the door, immediately his uh, wild shape is dispelled by some sort of like word that is on the door. And he immediately just <laughs> turns back into humanoid form, sitting at the door, looking all around in this room. And he goes, then explain that. That's a fucking big rat. Holy shit. And that's where we're going to end this week's episode of Altair and Tales. <laughs>
beautiful. Oh, it's weird Damn, how all this shit's the coming together now. We got to. <laughs> Oh God! Everything's getting messy. Uh, so, and thanks everybody for watching this week's episode of Altair and Altair and Tales. I know that things are probably going to get more chaotic and just ridiculous as time goes on. It's only episode three, and everything got completely derailed. And I've had to come up with so much shit on the fly during these three <laughs> recording sessions in one day. What so, did you expect? What did I? Ex- what did I expect? Yeah. Uh, well, thanks everybody for watching. Let's do our goodbyes. Uh, Tech, you got anything? Nothing. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Bloody wall. You got anything? That other paladin better stay out of my way. The other paladin better stay. What I'm gonna have to do now is I gotta find a time to bring all three of you, all six of you, in for like an epic (laughs) battle scene in this fucking tavern or some shit like that. It's gonna have to happen to continue this arc, I guess. Somehow. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. It's gonna be a good time. Oh, I'm gonna hate my life DMing six people. Uh, (laughs) Jacob, anything? Nobody got to taste my punches today. I'm sad. Uh, yeah, I'm. I did want to apologize that it was more of a, an RP lore dump episode, but sometimes we're gonna have that a little bit here with uh, the way we're doing this like continuous one shot campaign with different people. Today was a lot. You guys got probably I will say the most lore and like history of what's going on though compared to the other two groups did though. You definitely got most of the information of like oh something's not fucking right here like this okay you guys so, got a lot of somebody's stuff. lying to somebody somebody's lying to somebody they're both telling the same story what the fuck's actually going on so but yeah all right everybody we will see you next time on the cantrip cast goodbye bye